Okay, so today we're going to be going over creating custom families, and mostly we're just going to get into the templates themselves. So when to select which template, what I tend to use uh, different templates for, and then we'll get into actually using the family editor and creating new custom families and things like that um, here in a little while. But under families, we're going to go to new and yours is not going to look like that. Yours will probably look something like this. So there are all these different templates that are built into Revit for various things. So obviously you've got things like balusters, columns, uh, creating new doors, furniture, all of that sort of stuff. Now which one you select does matter. And the reason for that is it's going to identify as whatever you selected. So if I build a case a piece of fern or a cabinet under furniture I can do that that's not a problem but it's going to identify as furniture in whatever project I load it into so whatever line work or line weights I have set up for furniture so maybe I have a really fine line weight for furniture um, in my model it's going to identify as that and use that line weight as opposed to whatever line work you've got set up for casework. So which one you pick does make a difference in terms of its visual appearance, but it also makes a difference in how it interacts with your model. So I could build a door in something else. I could build it in like a, a generic model fashion, um, but if it doesn't identify as a door, it might not interact with my wall. Um, a good example of this is the the window tool. So if I want to build a skylight, that's great. I can build it under window if I want, but it's not going to interact with roofs because windows only interact with walls. So I would need to make my roof out of a wall to get that window to interact with it, which then gets into a whole mess of where does it stop and how is this in any way beneficial. So if you want to create a skylight, you don't want to create it under a window because it's going to host itself in a wall. You probably want to build it under like a generic model roof based. That way it shows it, it actually interacts with roofs and will cut out the hole and everything that you want it to um, to generate the, the look that you're after. So things like that can all make, make a difference um, in which template you choose here. I personally also use these in slightly different ways um, when it comes to building light fixtures. So I don't like using the actual light fixture templates. Um, they, they just tend to be a little bit cumbersome and uh, not quite as flexible as I would like them to be. Um, so what I tend to do is I tend to make my light fixtures um, some version of a generic model. If it's a sconce, I'll make it a face base. Um, if it's a pendant, I'll make it a, a, a ceiling base. Um, you know, that sort of stuff makes a difference um, in how they interact. But you'll recognize that if I'm making my, my light fixtures out of a generic model, I do not get the actual light source that comes with these light fixture templates. And the reason that I tend to avoid the light fixture that comes in with the actual family is I want to be able to place those when I'm actually in the model itself. So if I have a sconce that I've made as a generic model, I will put a studio light in that sconce itself. Then if it has two lights within that sconce, I can control each side of that light individually. The only reason that I tend to do this is multiple times I have had a situation where my light fixture is casting kind of crazy shadows and weird situations where I get a really bright spot on one side of the fixture but not so much on the other side. Um, and being able to control all of the individual points of light within like a chandelier helps me to kind of 
gauge and move those shadows around as I see fit. So I can make it a little bit brighter on one side, a little bit darker on the other. And I can also move those lights up and down within the fixture itself. So maybe I bury a light source a little bit deeper into a sconce um, if I want a more narrow stream of light for the look that I'm after, or I move it down towards the opening of the, of the sconce to allow it to kind of flood flood out a little bit more so it making them generic models gives me a little bit more flexibility um, I know most people do not do that they'd prefer to have their light fixtures be light fixtures um, but that's just my own personal preference and being able to control the lighting quite a bit more um, within a rendering that I'm doing so whichever whatever you're actually building it's a good idea to actually use the the template that's built for it um, until you get used to how each one kind of interacts and how you can use these in different ways so I did not start out making my light fixtures as generic models I adapted to that after making multiple ones um, using the actual light fixture templates uh, but I've gotten to the point where I know I kind of prefer the generic model um, just for the adaptability that it offers me so those are that's kind of a run through of using the template files and when to use certain things and when not to um, it's fairly self-explanatory and each each template file is set up slightly differently some will have a wall in it some will have a floor in it uh, just as a hosting element others will just be completely empty and you're kind of free to build whatever you want within the space so that's a general overview of family templates and their different purposes.